And welcome back, everybody. My name is Altamar, and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Planescape Torment. Where we left off last time, we arrived in the lower ward, and our good friend Mort got kidnapped. I'm gone. So he dropped a bunch of his shit on the ground, which is really unfortunate, because I don't got a lot of room for all that garbage. That's okay, though. We'll figure it out. He's carrying a bunch of skulls, and I'm pretty sure that we don't need any of this junk anymore. In fact... I'm like 99% sure we don't need any of that junk. We might need that diary. We don't, well we do need the skulls. The skulls we need for this place. And we're going to keep his teeth because we will be getting more back. Um, maybe in this video we'll see how it goes. This might be a two part one just because the uh... The lower ward is a really large area. Not in terms of size, it's about the same as every other place, but it has a lot of stuff in it, so. And just to uh, keep that in mind, there is a man named Kuro here. He can teach you to be a fighter. We're not going to bother talking to him. Uh, but if you want to become a fighter character, just talk to him, and he will set that up for you. Uh, we're going to go up north first, I think. Sebastian. You see an older man in elegant robes. He has bright eyes and a warm smile. He gives you a slight bow as you approach. Good day, Cutter. I'm Sebastian. How may I serve you? Greetings. Greeting to you, uh, greetings to you as well, Cutter. He stops in mid-sentence as he notices your scars. You see his eyes travel along them and his eyebrows, eyebrows arch in surprise. He returns his gaze to you. I was about to ask what I could do for you, but there's no need. I think I can see why you've come to me, Cutter. What? Are you trying to say you can help me with these scars? He smiles at you and shrugs his shoulders. Perhaps, Cutter. Perhaps. He leans forward and begins to examine your scars carefully. He runs a finger along some of them, mumbling to himself. Finally, he looks up at you and says, Yes, Cutter, I can help you. I cannot cure you, but I can alleviate the worst of your condition. And your price? Ah, yes, the price. He begins stroking his chin and stares at you. You get the impression you are being weighted somehow. He seems to come to some sort of decision. I have a job I think you could perform. Go on. I have signed a contract with a certain creature. I am no longer able to fulfill the contract. It is beyond my abilities. However, the creature will not release me from the contract. Instead, it has threatened me with death unless I fulfill the contract. And let me guess, you want me to solve this problem for you? He sighs. Yes, I cannot do it myself. My reputation demands that I fulfill the contract or face the consequences. I am at your mercy in this regard. Will you help me? What kind of a creature are we talking about? An Abashi named Grosak Cutter. He pauses to gauge your reaction. I know this is a difficult task, but one I think you can handle. Also, the reward I offer you is great. He gestures at your scars. What were you contracted to do? He shakes his head. I cannot reveal that information, Cutter. I am magically bound not to. That is why people come to me. They know that if I accept a contract, it will be handled with discretion. I see an interesting proposal. Will you do it, Cutter? Yes, I'll give me the details. He smiles at you and gives a sigh of relief. Thank you, Cutter. The creature is an abishi... Abishai, sorry. Abishai? Abishai, maybe. Named Grossuk. You will need a magic weapon to cause it any harm, so check with some of the shops if you do not own one. A spellcaster can harm it as well. Grossuk can be found at the east beyond the siege shower. Alright. Um, but I have other questions. He's, his smile broadens and he gives you a slight bow. Ask away, Cutter. I had a talking skull and he was kidnapped. Can you help me? He stares at you for some time before answering. A skull? Well... If I were to hazard a guess, I would say that your skull is now in the possession of the Master of Bones, which means you should get yourself another skull cutter. What can you tell me about the Master of Bones? He frowns and glances about for a moment. His name is Lothar, and he doesn't appreciate the attention of others. I know nothing of him, and I can answer no questions about him. You can actually see a hint of fear in his eyes. Let us speak of another subject, Cutter. Where can I find the Master of Bones? A ruined house somewhere in this ward leads to his... Demence... Des Demese? Demese? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Demense? Demesne. Maybe. I don't know. I know nothing more. You can actually see the hint of fear in his eyes. Let's speak of another subject. Alright. Luckily, I already know where our good friend Mort is. Mmm. I made myself some hot chocolate, and it's fantastic. I guess we can go get Mort right away. Actually, I don't know if we can get Mort right away. We really need to rest first before we go busting into some enemy place. Gort, Thorpe, and Zurb we will talk to you next, I think. Why not, I guess. 
This huge creature stands over 9 feet tall. Rippling muscles support its massive frame. It seems to be engaged in conversation with two, or two similar creatures next to it. Greetings. He turns at your greetings and begins to look about. After a moment, he looks down and notices you. A look of confusion crosses his features. What do you want of Zerb? I have some questions. He gives you an apologetic look and shakes his head. Zerb not speak language well. Sorry, you talk to Thorpe. He gestures to one of the creatures next to him. Okay. Hmm. Let's talk to Thorpe then. Hello, Thorpe. This creature is huge. Yeah, we did that already. Greetings. He looks down at you and gives you a friendly smile. What do you want, Smalley? I have some questions. You got a question? Maybe Thorpe got answer. He smiles at you. Who are you? He smacks himself in the chest with a thunderous blow. Thorpe! He raises his arms above his head and shakes his fists at the sky. Mighty warriors, Thorpe. All Thokala are mighty warriors. He places his hands on his hips and glares at you. Who are you? I'm going to lie and say I'm Adam. He thinks about it for a moment then nods. That's a good name for Smalley. Nice ring to it. Thorpe-like. I have some more questions. What you doing here? He barks out a laugh and smiles at you. Thorpe here with friends. He gestures to the nearby Thokola. We're going to barsh a flying lizard. He lets out a roar and begins to pound his chest with fists the size of hams. A uh, flying lizard? He nods his head but then begins to make crawling motions. Lizard, you know, but can fly. He begins to flap his arms like a huge misshapen bird. Eventually he settles down and looks at you expectantly. You mean a dragon? He snorts and raises his full height. Thorpe good, but he not that good. Someday Thorpe want to barsh dragon. He stares off into the distance with a longing expression, then sighs. But this is not that day. Well, if it's not a dragon you're talking about, what is it? Thorpe not remember what Xanthia called it. He pauses to think. It lizard, tall as Thorpe, walk on back legs, got wings, got claws, red in color. I think she called it Abishai. He pauses then shrugs. I've heard of something called Nabishai. Is that what you mean? Abishai? His eyes light up as he fixes or gives you a joyous smile as he looks or nods his head. Yes, I'd be shy. Flying lizard. Thorpe and his friends barsh really good. Thorpe be warrior of statue. Then Xanthia accept apology. What is this about Xanthia and apology? Thorpe take friends to tavern last night. Thorpe gets stinking drunk, fall on Xanthia's table, spill drinks all over her. He looks embarrassed. Xanthia says she not accept apology unless Thorpe be warrior of statue. So killing an Abishai is supposed to give you stature. Xanthia says so. Thorpe not know. I have to go now. Alright. Um. We should probably go talk to Xanthia, I guess. Because I don't think that they're carting around any magic weapons. And we know from this dude up here, who is Sebastian, that, uh. Alright. Abishai can only be hurt by magic. You see a pretty young woman in fine clothes. Her skin lacks the usual yellow tint of inhabitants of this ward. She appears to be watching three nearby creatures with interest. Greetings! Mm. She turns to face you with an annoyed look. Or, sorry, she turns to face you and an annoyed look crosses her face. Yes, what do you want? I have some questions. Fine, she looks irritated. Who are you? My name's Xanthia. She looks you up and down, then furrows, and then frowns. Is there something else you want? I have some other questions. What you do in here? There's going to be a fight, and I want to see it. She smiles wickedly. It should be interesting. A fight? Yes. See the three Thokala over there? She points to the three hulking creatures with rippling muscles. They're going to try and kill an Abish Abishai. Abishai? Abishai. I don't know. The stupid oafs. I've heard of something called an Abishai. What is it exactly? It's a lower plains creature. A Bazitu, I think. Batazu. Wow, I'm bad at pronouncing. She frowns in thought. In any case, the Abishai have nasty dispositions, sharp claws, and can cast spells. Very formidable. The Thokala look like they can take care of themselves. Normally I would say yes, Thokala are very powerful warriors. She smiles slyly, leans into Whisper to you. However, I know something they don't. And what might that be? Abishai can only be hurt by magic. She snickers. The Thokala will be slaughtered. I have no doubt about it. She straightens up and watches the Thokala eagerly. How do you know they can only be hurt by magic? She gives you an annoyed look. My husband is very high up in the Harmonium. The Harmonium guards are trained to deal with, and with creatures such as the Abishai. That's how I know my husband told me. Why don't you warn the Thokola? Why should I do that? I'm the one who suggested the fight. Why? My husband tries to better his social standing with his underlings by drinking with them in the local taverns. Last evening he forced me on such to such an occasion. These three oafs were there boasting of their prowess as warriors. It was obvious they were in a drunken stupor. When they decided to leave, one of them tripped and fell into the table I was sitting at. She pauses. Go on. 
She frowns angrily. Most of the drinks at the table spilled into my lap and ruined a very expensive evening gown. So while the Cretan was trying to apologize, I whispered to him that I only accepted the apology of a warrior of a statue. If he were truly such a warrior, he'd be able to defeat Abishai in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're gonna get them killed because they ruined a dress. You obviously do not understand the intricacies behind the situation. She looks at you like you're an idiot child. I was embarrassed and humiliated in front of my husband and his underlings. She looks angry. I'm gonna go go warn them because you're a fucking All right. ditzy bad word that I'm not gonna say on this video, but it rhymes with punt. Anyways, you see Thorpe. The Thokala. He gives you a friendly laugh as you approach. The small back. What do you want of Thorpe? Ask some questions. Um, I talked to Xanthia. She says you're going to fight in Ebishai. He smiles and nods at you enthusiastically. That's right. Thorpe and friends Barsh. I'm going to warn him. Warn Thorpe. I've learned that Ebishai can only be hurt by magical weapons. He gives you a worried look. Need magic? How you know? I talked to Xanthia. She told me. He seems confused. At first, the look of realization appears on his face. Xanthia played Thorpe for Coney. She lie, trying to get Thorpe and friends dead. I'm afraid so, Thorpe. He nods. Xanthia nods. Deserve apology. Thorpe free from debt to her. Yes, you're free of your debt. Thorpe, thank you. You save life. You save life of friends. He turns to the other Thokala and speaks to them hurriedly. After a moment, all three bow to you and each hands you a pouch of coins. Thank you. You're a good friend. You deserve. I must be going. There we go. We saved the relatively good, if somewhat dumb giant creatures that are huge. All right. Now let's go talk to Xanthia and see how mad she is. You see Xanthia, she gives you a look filled with hatred. You warned the brute, didn't you? Yes, I did what I felt was right. She nods her head slowly. I will not forget this insult. Good day to you. She turns and leaves. Hey, we gained a level. That's excellent. Well, I'm not exactly sure if that is a good or bad thing. But I'm pretty sure it's a good thing, so let's gain a level here. First up, we are now a mage level 8, which is pretty cool. And we got a new point to put in something. We're going to put it into Charisma. Mm hmm. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to put it into. And it looks like Dakon is almost up a fighter level. And Anna is kind of near a fighter level, I guess. So let's head out of here. We're pretty well done with this little portion of the lower quarter. There is much, much more to go, though. Um, let's go up this way. All right. These guys are cool. Harmonium officers are awesome. Right. I actually join that faction most of the time when I play this. Let's look to Anna's eye. I can't remember what she has to talk about. You see a sickly Gethzerai woman. She is hunched and bent, and her constant coughing is obviously a source of pain to her. She holds a handkerchief that is practically soaking with blood, tissue, and phlegm to her face. She spies you and hisses. Greetings. She stares at you and speaks a few mumbled words to Dakon. Dakon glances at you. She cannot understand your speech. She says she is dying. What is she dying of? Her name is a nut. You didn't even talk to her, how do you know that? Her name is Anazi. She says she used to work in a meat curing house here until half a month ago when the illness became too much for her to bear. She was abandoned, evicted from her home, and left for dead. Speech pains her and her illness has crippled much of her mind. She says there is nothing she could give you of value. And? No, that she will not recover. I can put her out of her misery, that is all. As a Zerth of the people, it is my responsibility to provide an alternative. Then be merciful, Dakon. Dakon draws his blade and waits for the woman to prepare herself. She touches the unbroken circle of Zerthamon he wears for a moment, and her face is stoic. His blade is a blur, and when he has completed the stroke, she lies bleeding on the hard stone of Sigil Street. Well struck, Dakon. Let's go. So we killed her. I don't know if there's a better way to do that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there is. Okay. Now where are we headed to? Let's find Yimin. Right. I do not remember his name, but I remember this guy. This man has a rough has rough leathery skin with a pale yellow cast and gaunt features. His face is angular, and his nose is small and highly placed, and his ears taper to points. A tracery of tattoos and scars cover his body. He is dressed in strange, gaudy leathers that look more ornamental than combat ready. His eyes are like two small black stones, 
and they track you as you approach. Before you reach him, Dakon pauses. I would caution you against speaking to this Githyanki. What's a Githyanki? Githyanki and Githzerai were once of common stock. We were slaves and food for the Elithids, mind flayers who devoured our lives in order to succor their own. One of our ancestors, the warrior queen Gith, led us to victory against the Elithids, and we escaped. We have waged an unending war on the Mind Flayers ever since. However, there was a disagreement over the future of our people. Upon the Blasted Plains, our leader Zerthamon made the pronouncement of two skies and steel was bared. One race became two. It is a rift that cannot be crossed peacefully. We're going to speak to him anyways. Dakon nods. The Githyanki has been watching your approach and seems to ignore you entirely. Dakon, who wails on the walls of Shrekatlor. An unexpected surprise, he draws his weapon. Dekon also draws his blade. Yemen, your blood shall corrode the flag flagstones of the street. Well, screw that. Uh, do we want to stop them? Well, we could stop them. Or we could just kill them. Hmm. Ah, uh, we might as well fight. The Githyanki and Dekon begin to trade blows immediately. I'm going to attack. Um, just as a side note, there is a quest involving this guy. If you do not have Dakon in your group, you can talk to him and learn about... Oh, hi. It would appear we made a bunch of good Yankee friends, unfortunately. Oh, damn. Alright. I really wish we had more tier, but luckily we have healing stuff. At least several healing stuffs. Alright, so you're gonna go fight him. I need you to. Magic missile, I guess, on that one. And another magic missile. We really need better spells, that will come soon. Would you die already so that we can move on to the next guy? Fine. You know what? Third magic missile. Just go down. Alright, so we got two of them down. One left. One is still attacking. Alright, we should be okay now, I think. Sweet. So, they weren't super thrilled that we attacked them. Obviously. With good reason, I mean... He was their buddy and we kind of killed him in the middle of the street. But, the point of this was to not attack things so that we could find a place to rest and heal prior to going to find Mort, who is pretty important. Uh, so there's some slaves being watched over by the Harmonium. Slavery is accepted in the city. We can actually talk to Trist. She is a slave, I think, if I can remember correctly. You see a young woman who is trying to get your attention. She is wearing shoddy clothes, but her demeanor is one of elegance, unlike that of the people who surround her. Upon closer inspection, you notice that her skin is clean and smooth, lacking the yellow tint of the inhabitants of this ward. She notices your approach and smiles at you. Greetings. Mm. I think the power is that you notice me. I am in need of the services of a mercenary. She pauses and examines you more carefully. If appearances are any indication, you would seem to be such an individual. What exactly is it that you want of me? The heart of the matter is that I am to be sold into slavery for a crime I did not commit. I am in need of a champion, someone who will help me prove my innocence and free me from this fate. Tell me exactly what's going on. She thinks for a moment. This is long in the telling cutter. Please bear with me. Go on. She sighs as she begins her tale. My husband died recently and left me his business. I am not business oriented, so I decided to sell. Not long afterward, I was contracted by a lender saying a loan on the business had not been paid. She pauses to gather her thoughts. I examined all the documents my husband kept and found that there has indeed been a loan taken, but it had been taken, but it had just been paid recently in full. I explained this to the leader, and a few days later, he asked for a copy of the document. It was nowhere to be found. She looks concerned and pauses to think. Go on. Well, when I cannot prove my point, the, 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 when I cannot prove that the loan was paid, the lender took me before the court. My monies were taken and applied to the balance owed. Since it did not pay off the loan, I am to be sold on the block to try and recover the remaining amount due. She gives you a forlorn look. I don't understand why I sell you into slavery. 
It serves many purposes. First, it keeps the prisoners relatively clear of all but the uh, keeps the prisons relatively clear of all but the vilest criminals. Second, the sale of the convicted is used to pay for any damages, costs, or fees involved in the case. Finally, the convicted still serves a sentence from which they are eventually released, supposedly as better citizens. This is all fascinating, but I don't see how I can help you. I need someone to find the missing document, the one that proves the loan was paid. Or if you could purchase my contract, I could pay you back. She gives you a pleading look. I can't spend the next five years of my life in this ward cutter. It will kill me. Surely you've noticed the illness shared by all who live here? Yes, the yellow skin and coughing. Yes, Cutter, please. Can you find it in your heart to help me? She looks at you nervously. Please. Um, what's in it for me if I help you? She stares at you blankly for some time, then a look of concern crosses her face. I, I have nothing to give you, Cutter. I have lost everything. She appears desperate now. Please don't lead me to this fate. Yes, I'll help you. Updated my journal. What's the lender's name? I know his name well, Cutter. After all I've been through, I would not likely forget it. She gets a faraway look and shudders for a moment. Byron Pickett is his name. She pauses for a moment, and his associate may be someone named Lenny. Who is this Lenny? She thinks for a moment. There was a small, feral-looking man who came to court a few times. He would sit behind Pickett and whisper him to whisper to him occasionally. She pauses and look, looks lost in thought. Go on. I remember him because he always seemed uncomfortable in his clothes. He would pick at them as if they were new, as if he were not used to wearing them. She pauses again. On such an occasion, Pickett told him to sit still and stop fidgeting. He called him Lenny. Where can I find Lenny? She thinks for a moment, then shrugs. I am not sure, actually. My husband told me that some of the ruffians could be found southeast of the market, near the siege tower, I believe. We're going to find Byron. She thinks for a moment. I think that he can be found in or around the open air market. Forgive me, but I am not certain. Okay. I'll go help you with your quest, probably, when I get a moment to do so. What was this building? I can't remember. Um, we'll come back here. This is for the quest we're on, actually. There's also a couple more items we'll grab from inside there, but mostly it's for the quest we're on already. I just remembered. All right. Let's go talk to this person. Scofflaw Pen. Let's talk to him. You see a thin, stooped man hunched over a desk, scribbling on a piece of paper. His hair is thinning and drab, drawn, sorry, his hair is thinning and drab, drawn back into a ponytail, and thin spectacles adorn his hooked nose. His age could be anywhere from his early 20s to his late 40s. He doesn't look up as he speaks to you. What do you want? Make it quick. I'm missing a skull. That's how it looks from where I'm standing, too. I'm serious. A companion of mine has been stolen. Then you might want to ask around for Lothar, Master of the Bones. Word has it, he's got a quest in the library. Quite nice. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. Word has it, he's got quite a nice little library of skulls. I don't know where to find them, though, and even if I did, I wouldn't tell. He knows more about magic than most Berks ever dreamt, and I won't be the one to cross him. He turns back to his papers. Now get out. Alright, fair enough. I'm guessing I can't rest there. We're down by the siege tower now. Siege tower is this building here, by the way. This appears to be a siege tower, as walls are scarred and pitted, and it has seen many a battle in its lifetime. All right. Mm -hmm. I guess we can go into the siege tower, why not? Let me get in. Done. All right. What's that? Oh, stiletto. I thought there was a way into the siege tower near here somewhere. Siege tower, let me in. What's this down for? A drawbridge? I guess we can talk to Grosak. Wasn't he the one we had to kill? I think so. You see a reptilian creature with a snake-like body, four clawed feet, leathery wings, and a draconian head. The scales are covering its body, or sorry, the scales covering its body are a vile shade of green. The creature stands upright on its hind legs, balancing with his prehensile tail. As you approach, its eyes narrow to slits and it begins to hiss. Greetings! The air around the creature begins to radiate heat, and its scales take on a pale sheen. It gives you a hungry look and appears ready to strike. Suddenly, it releases a flurry of hisses and relaxes its stance a bit. Sko, Grossak, not talk! Told wait, it glares at you as its tail lashes back and forth. Sebastian sent me. The creature relaxes up quite a bit and the air grows cooler. It holds out a clawed hand to you. Give Grossak information. It looks at you expectantly. 
What information? It's hard to read facial expressions on a reptile, but you are certain that Grossack is rather annoyed with you. His tail begins to lash furiously and the air goes warm again. No question! Give Grossack information or die. Grossack then take information from your body. I need to know which piece of information is for you. I run errands intended for several people. You understand. He glares at you for a moment while he thinks. Finally, he gestures at the nearby tower. Siege tower. How to get inside. Sebastian say he divine way. Grossack takes it takes a step towards you and holds out his hand. Now give. Oh, that information. I'm sorry, Sebastian wanted to deliver that one in person. He'll be along soon. Updated my journal. The air around Grussack begins to radiate heat and his scales take on a pale sheen. He gives you a hungry look and appears ready to strike. He opens his mouth to reveal several rows of razor sharp teeth. No, Grussack think you lie. Give information now. Grussack kill you quick, not slow. Not give Grussack, take time. Remove your insights, let you watch. Wait, I don't have the information you want, but I know something that I think is worth my life. Grossack cocks his head to one side and glares at you. He seems lost in thought for a moment. Grossack, listen. Information good. He gives you a toothy grin. Not good. You die. Grossack, give word. Grossack, what am I going to do with you, buddy? Why are you so angry? You need to calm down a little bit. Um... Yeah, we're gonna kill Grossick. Forget it. Okay, this is gonna hurt. I'm hurt. We actually might use one of our good charms. Uh, not that one. One of these ones. There we go. All right. Go, Ben. Go. Okay, Dacon. Really need you to get in on this fight. I'm hurt. And let's use that. another one. We might have to buy more charms, which is fine, we can do that. We have lots of money. Whoa, shit. <laughs> As you can see, Grussuk is a killing machine. Do I have armor spells? Memorized? I don't. Alright, Ice Knife it is. Oh man, that was rough. So, 8,000 experience for killing Grussuk and 8 copper, which is not worth it. But, the thing that is worth it, we're gonna go talk to Sebastian right now, is what we get from turning in the quest. Yeah, we got 8,000 experience, and that's good enough, but I'll show you what we're gonna get. Hmm. Also, this hot chocolate is too fantastic for words. It's more of a warm chocolate now, though. It's kind of gotten cool. Oh, I didn't run off. No wonder it was taking forever. Sebastian smiles at your approach. Good day, Cutter. Have you completed your quest? Yes, and I've come for what's due to me. One moment, please, Cutter. Sebastian reaches into his robe and removes a small crystal ball. He gazes into it for a moment before returning his attention to you. I cannot thank you enough, Cutter. I shall live up to my part of the bargain. Are you ready? Yeah. We got a permanent charisma increase. It is done, Cutter. Once again, I thank you. He bows deeply to us. So... We gained two charisma. We are now at 18 charisma. That is pretty fantastic. Also, I think some people gained levels. Not him. But he did. Two hip, three hit points. We are really low on hit points. We're getting really awful rolls. Like, terribly awful. But that's okay. Whatevs. Alright, so we can't go into the tower yet. Uh, there is a way, and I just don't remember what it is. We're gonna go to the market. We're gonna try to find a place to rest. We desperately need to rest. Right. Or at the very least buy some stuff. I don't actually know if we're allowed to rest here. Done. I don't think so. Nope. All right. Though there might be an inn here somewhere. Food. Right. What's this door? Oh, that leads straight out. Um, I don't know if there's an inn or not in this area. Really could use some resting though. That's fine. We know what we don't need to rest that much. Let's just go look at the shops. So let's talk to Cinder first, I guess. Why not? You see a large blustery merchant. He appears to be totally hairless and his pale yellow skin has is scarred as if from burns. He looks at you intently as you approach. Greetings. He smiles at you. Greetings, I'm Cinder. I've heard about ya. 
You'd be the scarred, clueless fellow to be wandering around the wards asking questions. What can I be helping you with? You look like you have a few scars yourself. He frowns and begins to laugh. Aye, that I do. A few years back, I had me kip set up in the hive. Some barmy mage decided to burn the ward right out of sigil. Almost took me with it. Sick for a month, I was. A month? That's not all that long. He nods and gets a far away look for a moment. Aye, it could have been worse. Local mage healed me and fixed all the scars. Fixed the scars and all. Could have grown back hair back, but I kind of like the look. Do you think this mage could help me with my scars? Oh, that's Sebastian. We already know that. Let's take a look at um, magical items first. First. Nope. Let's take a look at spells. Your spells, right? No, wrong one. Uh, spells. Alright. Spells it is. Let's take a quick peek. What do you got? Cone of Cold, you say? Level 5 spell, you say? Shoots cold in a cone, you say? Ball lightning, eh? Do you like ball lightning? Let's pick up that. Let's pick up this do. Absorbs damage, I like the sound of that. Elysium's Tears, that sounds pretty fancy. I'll grab one of those. I want force missiles too. Force missiles are a better version of magic missiles. And um That's two thousand dollars worth of spells. Let's, uh, right. Can I sell anything in this guy's inventory? No. All right, you're gonna buy these spells for me then. Fine. We'll just do that until everyone can. Done. Everyone now has a part of the spells. I'm gone. Now let's sell some junk. Hoping we can sell jewelry here. Because we have a bunch of rings, and I want to get rid of them. I'll buy some weapons. Or not weapons, but I want to sell. No, we can't sell. What does this do? Acid. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, we'll keep that, and we'll keep all of that. Oh, can't do that. All right. I was hoping we could just sell across characters, but not so much. Keep the pry bar and nothing else. Um, next person. Let's go to this guy's shot. Alec. Alec is magical items, I believe. If I had a hazard, I guess. There we go. So we can buy charms. What is that? Armor class 4. Hmm, that's a nice ring. It's better than the one I'm currently using. Hmm. I might buy that. Just because it's pretty nice. Just place a ring, is plus two armor class. Ring of the Traveler is plus one. Claw charms are 51 each. Or blood charms. Why don't we just buy the blood charms? They're cheaper. Can I buy more of them? Can I just mass buy these things? No. Okay, we're gonna buy a bunch. We seem to take quite a bit of damage. So we're gonna keep 15 of these around. And I'm gonna... What does this do? No, oh, right. And just a bunch of other junk. I want to buy that mega shield. Right, of course it is. Can I sell this crap? No, I can't. Hmm. Alright, fine. You buy it for me. Done. We will get more money later anyways. It's not a big deal. So we learned ball lightning. Where did my mega, sh mega shield go? There it is. Gives us two more armor than we had before. Um, you're a mage, sort of. You can wear this, right? Doesn't really help you at all. I guess we can just sell it then. And where's my last spell? Alright, let's take a look at our book. We haven't actually memorized any spells for a while. We have one identify spell, which is fine. One friend spell. No, uh, we don't really need friends anymore. We have 18 charisma, so we're pretty set on that. Armor is pretty good. Strength, I don't think we really need anymore. We have a rogue. Although, I guess Ice Knife is pretty okay. Uh, we're gonna get rid of the Axe of Torments. Never even used them, although I really should have. 
Make a ball. Actually, we will take one axe of torment. We'll take one of each of those. Actually, what's ball lightning do again? Oh, right, yeah, okay. And we're gonna do force missiles for our level four. Do we have any level fives? No. Okay. Now, bandages. You might as well just use them because there's only one. And they're just taking up inventory room. Clot charm. We'll keep up there. But we have a whole bunch of blood charms now, which is great. And now we need to find a merchant that will buy our crappy rings. Which is not apparently in this area. That's Byron Pickett. We're gonna talk to him in a bit. But first we're gonna go talk to Lenny. Alright. Done. In order to uh move along that little side quest there. Alright. All right. Lenny, there you are. Hello Lenny. We're gonna quick save, just in case. You see a feral looking young man in shoddy clothes. His eyes dart about as he scans his surroundings. He notices your approach and eyes begins eyeing you warily. Greetings. He looks you up and down, then glances about, returning his attention to you. He gives you a wicked grin. You best have a good reason for disturbing Lenny, Burke. I had some questions. He laughs at you. I ain't no tout. If you got questions, go find one. His smile broadens. You best push off before I have to bleed you. Oh, what if I told you Byron Pickett sent me? He stops smiling and examines you for a moment. His eyes linger on your scars and he swallows slightly. After a moment, he f after a, moment a frown settles on his face and he appears to be nervous. Pickett sent you. Why? He said you could answer some questions. He frowns. What questions? You notice he looks rather tense. I had a skull stolen from me, and I want it back. Do you know who would do Updated such a thing? My journal. He hesitates for a moment, then relaxes slightly. You get the impression that he expected you to ask about something else. He smiles at you. St uh, stolen skull, huh? Will that be with the work of Lothar's boys, not me? I've heard of Lothar. I just need to find him. Now, I don't know that I want to be the one to answer that question. He glares at you for a while, then shrugs. Ruined building just out of the siege tower. Can't miss it. He smiles evilly again. I had some more questions. What can you tell me about this ward? He looks around, then shrugs. This is the lower ward, home of the common people. Life here isn't as desperate as it is in the hive, but not as good as it is in the clerk's ward. He looks around again. Other than that, there's not much to be said. Okay. We're done talking to him for now, then. All right. Although, let's go get our skull back. There's the wrecked house. It marks it for us. So, let's go get Mort back. All right. We could use our skull friend. Done. Is this the wrong building? Yes. This is No, this is not the wrong building. This is the right building. Luckily, I know sort of what we're doing in here. That's a lot of skulls. Thank the powers you're here, Chief. Get me out of here. What are you doing up there? Those were at vermin nicked me and brought me here. Come on, boss. We have to get out of here. This place is bad news. Why don't you just float down? I can't. I tried. Come on, get me down before. A flash of light and smoke blinds you for a moment, and a withered old man stands before you. Have we visitors, Skull? Oh no, Mart whispers furiously at you. Do not offend this blood, boss. He'll be, he'll be dead book you faster than you can spit. The old man ignores Mort. Greetings, traveler. Who might you be to enter Lothar's humble salon without invitation? My pardon, sir, but you seem to have something that belongs to me. Ah, oh, yes. What might that be? The skull that belongs to me is... Oh, sorry. My friend Mort wound up on your shelf. You want the chattering skull with half the grace and manners of any ordinary creature. Give me a greater skull in return if you wish it back. I do not need to bargain for something that is already mine. He was never yours. Or anyone's to begin with. Your ignorance is astonishing. You truly know very little about very little. Now, fetch me another skull to replace him, or say goodbye to your little friend. Fine then, how do I get another skull that's worth what he's worth? Move aside the divan in the center of this room and pass through. The portal in the eastern wall in the chambers below to the catacombs. The portal will remain active for your return. In the catacombs, many skulls, one of great value lies within the interred crypts of the dustmen. Beyond the drowned nations, bring that skull to me, as my were rat or my were rat minions have failed to do, and I will see to it that your friend is returned to you. Perhaps I shall even answer some questions for you. I have been to the tomb you speak of. It is empty. My journal. What is the meaning of this? The tomb was so well trapped, so well defended from scrying magics that it was a challenge even for me. There must be some explanation for this, and he draws out of his words angrily and slowly. You will provide it to me. Go through the portal in the chambers below and seek out the answer. It was my own tomb. Your tomb? 
Your tomb? He eyes you carefully. We shall investigate this matter more carefully. Fetch me another skull, then, as you seem attached to yours, and we shall see what answers I can provide. Our agreement shall be as before. Do not try to deceive me with just any bone, either. I am something of a connoisseur. Return when you have something of value to me. Updated my journal. We have lots of skulls, actually. You have returned, I see. Do you have a skull for me? I have the skull of Hargrim, skeleton priest of the dead nations. Lothar takes the skull from you and examines it critically. Hargrim, you say, leader of the dead nations. Much information he'll have for me. A satisfactory bargain. His fingers twist through an arcane gesture. Your friend will be waiting for you above ground where you came in. Have your answers for me. I have many questions. Keep it quick, scarred one. I cannot tarry all day. Why am I immortal? Your mortality, your soul, if you will. That which allows you to live and die is gone from you. It was stripped from you by magical means. By the night hag, Ravel Puzzle Well. Your mortality is the key to your existence. When you find it, you will find your answers. Tell me about this Ravel. Ravel Puzzle Well is an enigma even among the night hags. Some would call her Barmy. Others say she plays a deeper game than any can see through. She is evil through and through making the fiends you'll see in the area seem positively divine when compared to her. She is out of the reach of men now, think the powers, for she was mazed by the Lady of Pain. Mazed? How do I find her? Mazes are like pocket dimensions, small places between planes. To reach one, you'll need to find a portal and a key. I do not know where the door or the key are. Perhaps you should seek out some of your old acquaintances. You have no- you have certainly left a trail of them behind. They will find you, no doubt. Pray they mean you well. Perhaps you should visit the Civic Fest Hall. They have many answers there. What did Ravel do? She was a maker of toys and puzzles, a solver of problems that didn't need solving. She decided that Sigil, the cage, was the largest puzzle box of all, and set herself to undo it, to let in the armies of fiends at her disposal, no doubt. She ups up to the balance of the city, and turned the entire burg into a charnel house. Carnal house? Carnal house. Pray to any power you hold dear with thanks that she did not succeed. I will find her, then force her to return my mortality. Knowing Farewell. Of Zerthamon, I, I think we can give him more stronger. skulls. Well, maybe not. I'm gonna get healed. Oh, he wants us to pay for his healing? Screw that. Um... Oh. He doesn't like us talking to him very much. He just sent us out. I just wanted to ask him some questions, but he was not willing to answer. So we have Mort back. Lothar is a pretty cool character, though. Um, where do we want to go now? I mean, there are a few more places to go here. There's a pawn shop. The pawn shop will probably I'm gone, all right. take our rings. If I can remember how to get into it. This is a pawn shop. Somewhere. Maybe the door's over here. I can never find the freaking door for this place. Ah, there it is. I was on the wrong side. All right, let's go talk to you. Hello, Micah. This rotund woman, complete with shrewish eyes and a nasally voice, brays out. Now, what have I here? A customer? Do mine eyes spy a customer? A diminutive man replies, of course your eyes spy a customer. They see a customer all the time. Customers on the street. We have no customers. We will never have customers. It is useless and forlorn to hope for. He pauses as his eyes alight on you. Micah, we have a customer. That's what I've been saying to you. She lowers her voice and turns to you. What can we do for you? I just want to let's talk about trades. I just want to sell some things to you. I feel kind of bad because you don't have any customers. So maybe you'll never get rid of these items and you'll die penniless and poor and destitute. And you'll be out on the street and you'll be like, if only that person bought something instead of selling stuff, then we for sure would not be living on the street. And I'll be a high roller because that's the way I roll. Do I need this book anymore? Not really. I actually don't know if I do. Ah. <sighs> well, there's another customer for you. Hey, wait. Who was that person? All right. Oh, it's a shopper. Okay. I don't remember if there's anything important in there. I think he's just, uh, just what he was. Let's go talk to uh, that dude for the quest now. Byron Pickett. Hello, Byron. You see a well-dressed middle-aged man. He seems to be scanning the crowd with a practice eye. He notices you approach and gives you a quick once-over. Greetings! He smiles at you and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I am Brian Pickett, moneylender. May I help you, moneylender? 
He nods again. Yes, I cater to the needs of merchants. Want to start a business? Keep one afloat that's down on his luck? Or perhaps expand a business? In either case, you come to me for the funds. He looks you up and down. I doubt that you are a merchant, sir, so what can I do for you? I have some questions. Very well, make it quick. I want to talk to you about Trist. Ah, Trist. He frowns and looks away. After a moment, he looks back at you and raises his eyebrows. What about her? I'm trying to find a missing document for her. He sighs and shakes his head. There is no missing document. That was a ruse invest instigated by Trist to cast doubt on her debt. This matter has been thoroughly investigated by the Mercy Killers, and they found no evidence of any such document. The Mercy Killers. Yes, a faction of fanatics dedicated to uncovering the truth in criminal cases and handing out justice. They are often used as investigators by the courts of sigil. They are quite thorough, and they found nothing. He glares at you. They could have missed something. That is a possibility, but not very likely. You obviously are not familiar with the Mercy Killers or their methods for you to make such a statement. If they could not find the document, then it does not exist. He looks at you angrily. Someone could have stolen the document and then destroyed it. That way the loan would be paid twice. For a moment he looks as if he is about to be furious with you, then a gloating smile crosses his face. What a terrible thought. Pity there's no proof of such an activity. He continues to smile at you. Yes, a pity. So tell me, why have Triss sold into slavery? Could she pay you your money in the form of a loan? Yes, she could. And I did make that offer to her. He looks at you sternly. However, she turned me down. I don't allow second chances. No one turns me down without suffering the consequences. No one. So we're going to leave that as it is. Let's go back and talk to Lenny once more and see if we can't uh, get him to give us some more information. Lenny, it's time for you to talk. Alright, I have some questions. Fire and pick it again. He said you can answer some questions. I wanted to ask you about the papers you stole from Trist. He swallows hard and stares at you. You notice his muscles tense and he looks like he's about to run. He puts one hand on his hip and in a nonchalant manner, but you can tell he is wound tight as a spring. I don't know what you're talking about, Burke. You best be off. I'm going to smile wickedly. You know what I'm talking about, Lenny. Byron had you steal some papers from Trist. I'm here to collect them. He swallows hard, and the corner of his eye starts to twitch. He glances at the scars that cover your body, then tries to meet your gaze, but cannot. Collect them? I, I destroyed the papers after I nicked them, just like Byron told me to. He finally meets your gaze. Really? Then why are you so nervous, Lenny? Let me guess. Byron thinks you destroyed the papers, but maybe you didn't. Maybe you kept them. A little blackmail material, perhaps. He stares at you for a moment, then suddenly turns to run. Grab him before he gets away! Just as he starts to run, you leap forward to grab him. He deftly steps out of your reach and begins to sidestep you. Seeing your quarry about to escape, you make another, more desperate lunge at him. You fail to grab him, but you do manage to bump him hard, knocking him off balance. Your efforts foil his escape. Alright, I didn't destroy them. I'll give them to you, just let me go. Hand them over, Lenny. I, I don't have them on me. You frown at him, and then see fear grow on his face. I swear it, I don't have them. I put them in storage. He continues to stare at you, breathing hard. Then let's go get them. He shakes his head sadly. We can't. They're in the warehouse, and they're not open for business right now. Rumor has it there's some sort of management change going on, but I don't know if that's true. In any case, I can't get the papers. He looks at you sheepishly. I'll look into this, and I'll get the papers myself then. Fine, I guess that snake picket wins again. He looks at you defiantly. Let's just go get the papers, Lenny. Go to the warehouse and tell the clerk, I'm here for a loan, and he'll give you the papers. Later, Burke. He suddenly bolts and runs away. Alright, off to the warehouse now. We're gonna go get ourselves some papers. That's not the warehouse. This is the warehouse. Management change isn't going to stop me. I'm gone. Alright. Vault of the Ninth World. Welcome to the Vaults of the Ninth World. How may I serve you on this fine day, Sigillian? What is this place? The Vaults of the Ninth World is pleased to serve as a warehouse for the lower ward. And all the sentients of Sigil. Our motto is, when one world just isn't big enough, we provide storage space for those who have little to spare. Our prices are competitive, our service exemplary, and our courtesy to customers is known throughout the plains. What are you? I am the voice of the Vault of the Ninth World. I am here to serve you. A customer, instruct me in what you desire. I'd like to claim something. And what exactly was it that you were looking for? I was looking for a large bag of coins. We have a bag of coins like the one you described, sir. I just need to find one thing from you. How much was in it? Somehow, I guess this feels right. 1,123 coins. Here you go, sir. Thanks for storing your goods at the Vault of the Ninth World. Can I get you something else? Answer a few more questions for me. Claim something else. I was told to tell you that I'm here for a loan. Oh, 
One of my secret passwords. Here are the papers you want, sir. Thank you. What else can I do for you? Nothing, girl. Um... Is this place really as big as a world? No, it's just a marketing exaggeration. There's a lot of space here, but not that much. Anything else to claim? Oh, I see. Alright, so we got our things. Lena's back there, Connell and Otis. I can't I don't think they're for anything in particular. I don't remember them being for anything in particular anyways. So let's bail out of here. Um, we needed to There's two more mini quests to do in this area. First up, let's take care of this Trist problem. You see Trist. She smiles at your approach and looks hopeful. Have you found the document cutter? Can you free me? Yes, I will give it to Duran and he will free you. A look of relief washes over her face. You think she is about to faint, but she quickly recovers. I thank you, Cutter. Please return to me after you speak with Duran. Which one is Duran? There's Duran. You see a boisterous auctioneer. He is very animated and does a lot of shouting, yelling, and stomping. He seems to have a tendency towards melodrama and makes a lot of strange facial expressions as he waves his arms. Greetings! He glances at you and motions to the crowd that he's taking in a break. Well, a thousand greetings do I bestow upon you, sir. He does a double take when he... Hang on one sec, my phone is ringing. I don't even know where it is. Ah, oh, it's telemarketers. Jesus. He does a double take when he notices your scars. You know, I take one look at you with my discerning eye, and I see a man in the market for healing charms. I can't turn my phone on silent. One sec, guys. Sorry about that. Boop. Done. Um, I have some questions. Little time for such wigwag, friend. There's dealing to be done. Speak quick. I want to ask you about Trist. He frowns for a moment, then shrugs. Very well, sir. What about Trist? I have proof that she's innocent of any crime. Very well. Show me this evidence. He holds out his hand to you. Give him the document. He opens the document and quickly scans its contents. After a moment, he sighs, then folds the document and puts it inside of his shirt. It seems the courts owe Lady Tristan apology, sir. From this moment, she is free, and I will make all the arrangements to have her status and property returned to her. Thank you, Durand. No, thank you. It's a rare individual who will do what you have done. He bows to you. Excuse me, I must speak with Lady Trist. Farewell. He starts walking towards Trist. That's nice. Let's see what she has to say. You are my savior, Cutter. I will forever be in your debt. I was happy to help you, Trist. Thank you, Cutter. She glances about, then pauses to think for a moment. You have saved me from certain death, Cutter. A slow, painful death. She frowns as she thinks, please wait here. I shall return shortly. She turns and walks away. All right, Trist. You see Trist approaching. She smiles and waves at you. Hello again, Cutter. Thank you for waiting. She looks about for a moment, then removes a purse from the folds of her dress. With the documents you provided, the courts will restore my statuses. My status in finances. This is not much, but it is a well-deserved reward for what you have done. She hands you a purse. Thank you, Trist. No, thank you. Farewell, Cutter. So we got some experience. Did we gain any levels? We did. Um, Dekon went up. One mage level. And... Nobody else leveled. Okay. I'm also going to move my group around a little bit. I want the skull in the front row because he's going to be our tank still. Now that we've recovered him, let's go talk to uh, what's his face. I want to brag about it. Done. I'm Byron, done. you idiot! You see Byron pick at the money lender back again. I had some questions. What's this place? No, I can't brag to him. I'm slightly disappointed in that. I know we haven't read our journal for a bit, and I'm not really going to, I don't think. It's just, there's a lot of writing in the journal. I guess not really that much, but, well, maybe we'll do it eventually. Mostly I wanted to show you guys beasts, though. So NPCs, so we found Asimars, or SMR, depending how you want to pronounce it. These are the opposites of Tieflings, so these are half Celestials, or at least partial Celestials, as opposed to Tieflings, which are part Devil. A cast is that crazy woman we killed. A Bariar is the centaur, basically. A Bashi, we killed one of those. Collectors. They look of her bodies. Cranium rats. These little weird head things. Dabis look like those. Dianar was the ghost we met in the beginning of the game. Uh, Dull was that librarian who had the extremely long beard. Look at that thing. Dustman female. Dustman male. 
Ebb Creekness was that uh, one Harmonium soldier we met in the bar. Fell was is the uh, tattoo guy. Female ghoul. Male ghoul. Giant skeleton. Scary. Githzerai. Godsmen. Which are believers of the source. Uh, I think they're craftsmen, basically. Uh, we already did Githzerai. Green Abashis are just... Um, Abishai, sorry. Harlot? Damn, girl. No, I'm just kidding. So, they are prostitutes. Harmonium. They are huge warriors with giant axes, generally. Thugs, similar. Lady of Pain. Scary. Makes mazes. Varghuls are annoying as hell. Um, Limlim. -lim. Pretty cool little things. Lothar is amazingly powerful, apparently. Mantok. It's, uh, he was the rat thing that we met. Merchant. Mercy Killer. Awesome looking faction. Farad, of course, we met and he got killed by shadows. Skeleton. Skeleton Priest. Small thugs. The Thokola are huge creatures. Look at that beast. Scary dude. Um, tiefling female, obviously. Tiefling male. Townsperson female. Townsperson female number two. Male one. Male two. Actually, male two looks... That looks like it would cause problems everywhere. Like, what if you trip a little bit in, like, a busy street and just stab someone by accident? A Trakopotica. And, of course, our upper-class townie female who looks more like a harlot than the harlots do. Like, that is not an outfit. Upper-class male, much more normal outfit. Wear rats and, of course, wizards. Oh, and then zombie female. Zombie male. Done. All right. So, those are the beasts. We'll go through the journal another time. We're going to continue looking through this area. I can't remember how to get in the siege tower. I really, really don't. I don't think we can yet, actually, now that I think about it. I think it's later in the game. What else do we have to do? Oh, I, there's one more quest to do in this area. So, we do have one more small quest to do. We're going to go into here. We need to talk to a man named... Not him. Done. Uh, not you. Not you. Not Laszlo. Done. Not Cinder. Corvus? No, I don't think it's Corvus. Although we will talk to Corvus too. He's pretty cool. We're looking for a man named... Um... Gitzber, I think his name is Gitzber, Gilber, something along those lines. I think it starts with a G if I can remember correctly. He does one of the quests. Unfortunately, he is among the crowd, which is so extraordinarily annoying to find. Done. Hmm. Okay, let's try this again. No, 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 no. All right. No, 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 no. That's Karina. That's not quite what we're looking for, though. Laszlo. It's also not who we're All looking right. for. Not him either. Market worker. Market worker. Shopper. 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 Done. No, I can't see who you are over there in the corner. Oh, market worker. Drixel. I can't find him. Done. Hmm. He does have a quest for us, though. Is he at a table, maybe? Is he one of the merchants? Not Cinder. Okay, let's try this again. His name is Gitspur, I remember that. Alright. Maybe he's outside. Gone. Oh there he is. I'm just an idiot, Gilspur. Why can I talk to you, Gilspur? Alright. I'm gonna ignore you. Get out of the way, I need to talk to Gilspur. There we go. You see a florid, boisterous man. He's shouting and carry on like there's a war about to come through. 
like he's got something lodged in his intestines, like, well, he's too excited about something to talk in a normal tone of voice. Ooh, an auction. Maybe we can sell Anna here. I'll get you if there's something to gut skull. Must be love. It's love, right, boss? Leave it off, you two. I need to ask some questions here. The rapid-fire delivery makes it difficult to understand him. You, sir, are you there? You look like you use something. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but give me some time. I'll give you some time. I need to figure it out on the spot. You need some rooms. You got some rooms. You want some supplies? You got some supplies. What? <laughs> what are you selling? Uh, we don't need him to sell anything. Right. Do you have any jobs to do? I certainly do, friend. If you're learning for your if you can take it out into 50 gold coins. All you need is to run this home with a little print shop, ask a couple of copies of it. Here, take it. He shoves a crumpled piece of paper into your hands. Oh, thanks. Updated okay. my journal. So he wants us to deliver a thing to the print shop. All right. Not that hard to do. But it's worth 50 coins, and more importantly, it's worth experience, which is what we want. I'm almost out of hot chocolate, though, and now I'm sad. We're almost done with this area, though, I think. Let's go talk to Scofflopen. Well, if it isn't the devourer of time himself. Do you actually want something this time? And a few questions. Yes, Gilspur er, asked me to deliver this handbill to you so you can print up a hundred copies. He takes the handbill from you, looks it over, and says, I'll have it for him later. Go tell him. Okay. You are like the worst customer service person in the world. I'm gone. He really, really is. Once again, once again, you come to me again. There must be something I can do for you, brother. The Duran cannot, huh? Uh, that handbill is printed. It's pretty terrific. I'm the man for the job. Here, take this message to Kelder Duran of the Foundry. I'm sure he'll be glad to receive it, and you'll be glad of 100 coins in return. Alrighty then. Updated Thanks. Updated my journal. Like my ah, increased. excellent. Good. More to gain a level. Ten hit points. Finally, a moderately good amount of hit points gained. Realistically, I should have probably rerolled like a million times, but that's not how we're gonna do this. We need to get into the foundry now, and this is the foundry here. The door is locked. You see a burly board guard. Say your business, please. I'm here to put in an order. I'm sorry, sir, but we are not currently accepting any new orders due to a large project we have undertaken. Check back in about a year, sir. Thank you for your interest. Right, I had more questions. Um, I'm here to pick up an order. Yes, sir, may we, may we see your receipt? I'm sure I had it on me. Yes, sir, I'm sure you did. However, until you can produce evidence that you have business here, I'm afraid we cannot offer admittance. But, can I try to lie? May I see your receipt? Yes. Sir, you do not appear to have a receipt. Hmm, no. I do have other questions, though. Um, no business. Sorry. <laughs> I tried to lie. It did not go well. Wait a minute. I got... Don't I have to go... I thought I had to go pick up something here. Yeah, Gisper's note. Um, I have a message for Keldor from Gitzburg, the auctioneer. Thank you, sir. You'll find him in the Great Godsman Hall. He opens the gate for you. Thank you. I'm gone. This place is actually really cool. I really love the foundry. But this video is getting actually really long, so I think I'm going to end... I'm going to make the lower wards slash foundry into a two-part video. So, like always, if you guys have any suggestions or comments, please leave them, be or please leave them below. I will see you guys in the next video where we'll finish up the foundry, we'll finish up the lower ward, and we'll probably head into the upper ward. See you guys then.